Thank you. Thank you. Hello, this is the Nigerian Television Authority coming to you live from the ancient city of Kano, where the Kano State Government is hosting an uh, education recovery conference here at the, precisely at the Dangote Business School inside the Bayer University, Kano. It brings together stakeholders from the government and public uh, private sector uh, on how best to improve the standard of education in the state. And uh, Governor Abakabir Yusuf is uh, expected to preside over the uh, event. My name is Abdullah Mustafa. Uh, thanking you for being with us. On the high table. Joining His Excellency on the high table as well is the British High Commissioner, the Deputy High Commissioner, British High Commission, Nigeria, Ms. Gil Lever. Should please come forward as well. Thank you. We would like to have equally on the high table the UNICEF Deputy Representative here with us. Should please come up to the high table. Thank you. UNICEF. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's equally invite to the high table the representative of the Honorable Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who is uh, actively presented at this occasion by the Director of Basic Education, Federal Minister of Edu uh, Education, Abuja. She's here, Mr. Folagi. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, with your kind permission, I seek to invite for the opening prayers Professor Abdul Rashid Garba, the Vice Chancellor, uh, Isia Karav University in Kanushu. Please come forward and uh, lead us in the opening prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Please, let's appreciate him. Thank you. Allah, we request you, we pray for your guidance throughout this occasion. We seek for your uh, exalted guidance and protection. We look broaden our minds to come up with worthwhile uh, recommendations that will better education in Kano State and in the nation in general. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opening prayer. Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kano State, Alaji Abba Kabiri Yusuf. Your Excellency, the Secretary to the State Government. Your Excellency, the Honorable Minister of Education. Members of the National and the State House of Assemblies here present. The head of civil service, members of the state executive council here present, development partners, our partners that have been working assiduously in the education sector, the United Nations, the FCDOs, UNICEF, World Bank, USAID, UNESCO, 
The keynote speaker in today's occasion, former minister in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, our esteemed own Professor Rukaya Ahmad Rufai OOEN. Our chief host, the Vice Chancellor, Bar University Kano, and of course, members of the academic communities, Bar University, as well as other academia here present. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the press and the security operatives, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Today mark a significant day in the history of education in Kano. Not quite long ago, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kano State, declare a state of emergency in the education sector. Probably based on what he met on ground in terms of dilapidation and the decay in the system of education from top to bottom. Your Excellency has taken his time, move around and observe the situation and take every bull by the horn and declare the state of emergency. This conference we are about to witness is one of the offshoots of His Excellency's preparations in tackling the education issue. And that is a conference that will strategize and forge a way forward toward revitalizing the sector that has so gone into oblivion. Your Excellency, we appreciate you for all that you've been doing in the past one year in the education sector, including all other things that you put on ground to ensure that the sector is being revived. There is no sector as important as education when it comes to issue of economic and prosperity of a state and a nation. So we thank you very much for that. Your Excellency, with your kind permission and approval, I would like to invite uh, one person that you assigned to work as the Commissioner of Education, who has been doing greatly well in that sector, and who is one person very close to you in terms of your political achievements and other issues that has to do with uh, state affairs uh, development. Let me invite to give us a welcome address in today's occasion, uh, the Honorable Commissioner of Kano State, Honorable Umar Haruna Dogwa. Shall we please appreciate him? Thank you. Aouz Billahi Meshudan Rajim, wa sallallahu ala nabiyu al-kareem, Maulana Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Your Excellency, the People's Governor, the Executive Governor of Kano State, Al-Haji Abba Kabir Yusuf, the representative of the Honorable Minister of Education, who also happened to be the Director of Basic Education, the FCDO team led by the British High Commissioner in Nigeria, Ms. Gill, the Development Partner Director of the FCDO, the UNICEF, the Secretary to the Kano State Government, the Head of Service, the representative of the Director General of the Nigerian Governors Forum, the Director of Education, Vice Chancellors, Development Partners, Critical Stakeholders, my colleague Commissioners, and other invited guests. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. When His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kano, sees the level of decay and dilapidation inherited. After several personal visits to schools in the state, he was left with no option other than to declare a state of emergency on education. The declaration serves as a first step to recovery. It also brings about the issue of this important conference on education recovery conference. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, research have shown that a person can live for 70 days without food. He can also live for 10 days without water. But research have also shown, conducted by sociologists, 
psychiatrists that it is almost impossible for somebody to live without hope. By aggressively embracing reforms to rebuild education, His Excellency aims to give hope to the less privileged, aims to give hope to the vulnerable, aims to give hope to the girls' child education. And together we can make it. And that is basically why we are here today. It is therefore my singular honor and privilege to, on behalf of the Kano State Government, welcome all invited guests, especially our development partners, critical stakeholders, paper presenters, discussing to this two-day important conference on education recovery and offshoot of the declaration of state of emergency by the People's Governor, Malang Abba Kabir Abba Gida Gida. Thank you very much. I wish you a happy deliberation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Shall we please appreciate the Honorable Commissioner one more time? I think he has... Your Excellency, I will be here all day today. I will be here all day tomorrow. It's a two-day uh, day's conference, and it has been planned to strategize way forward toward enhancing learning outcome, as well as other issues that has to do with learning and teaching. And I want to tell you, Plan FCDO's Ariwa Consultative Forum and Kano State Government are the three bodies that put their heads together to come up with this conference. Let's appreciate ACF Ariwa and Plan FCDO's and the State Government. Thank you. Your Excellency will be here today, as I mentioned, and today we have the chairman of the occasion that would sit here with us after the opening procession. And the chairman of today's occasion is none other but Dr. Abdullahi Bob Pabichi, the Secretary of the State Government, SSG Kano State. Please, let's appreciate him one more time, Mr. Yes. And he's going to be supported by Ms. Cynthia Ro. She's the Deputy Director, Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, who is already on the high table. So she's going to assist the chair as the co-chair of today's sitting. Please, let's appreciate her one more time as well. Your Excellency, distinguished participants, delegates, let me invite for the next activity, which is an opening remarks. And uh, the people that I made mention of, those that are supporting us in the sector in terms of donor partnership and other things that has to do with upliftment of the education cycle is going to do that. Let me invite Ms. Gil Liver, the Deputy High Commissioner British High Commission in Nigeria. Please, let's appreciate her for that remark. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction. So I'm Jill Lever and uh, Acting High Commissioner at the moment. Um, so to start with protocols, um, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kano State, uh, Engineer Abba Kabir Yusuf. His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Kano State, Aminu Abdul Salam Gwa, the representative of the Honorable Minister of Education, the Secretary of State to the State Government, uh, Dr. Bafa uh, the Honorable Commissioner for Education, Honorable Uma Haruna Doguwa, the Honorable Commissioner for Higher Education, Dr. Yusuf Ibrahim Kofa Mata. Professor Rufai, our keynote speaker, former Federal Minister of Education and the first female professor from Northwest Nigeria. <laughs> Special Advisor and Chair of the Conference Organizing Committee, Honorable Tajuddin Gambo. Development Partners present, members of the Arena Consultative Forum, distinguished academics, ladies and gentlemen, and if I've forgotten anyone at all, please let me stand on existing protocols. On this fourth day in the Islamic calendar, I'm pleased to say, Barka de Sabwa Shekara Musulunchi. This is my second time in Nigeria, but my first time in Kano. I'm really happy and delighted to be here. Teeming and vibrant. 
<laughs> Thank you. Teeming and vibrant, Kano is a historic city and a dynamic trading state, a huge commercial hub. Founded on the trade of ancient Sahara route, the center of a major agricultural region, famous for its traditional arts and crafts, uh, with the most amazing history. Um, I'm very happy to be here with you. I'm particularly pleased to be here um, at uh, Bayero University, Kano, the first modern era university in Kano State that will celebrate its 50th anniversary next year. And uh, this marvelous modern building, the Dangote Business School, of course, celebrates Africa's most preeminent and successful businessman, who is, of course, a Kano man himself. Kano's thirst for knowledge and quality education is also renowned. This huge demand here in Kano, in city and Kano state, for both modern academic and technical skills, cu coupled with Islamic religious learning. And Kano, for centuries, has been a renowned center of Quranic studies. And recalling the teachings of the great Dan Fodio of the Sokoto Caliphate, who encouraged literacy and scholarship for women and men, uh, and mass education for women, with several of his daughters emerging as scholars and writers. It's a very good place, very good city and state to be talking about education. So in my time here, I'm hoping to learn more and understand about how this mix of educational approaches and institutions can best serve the children of Kano and develop the vital human capital needed for a brighter future. We've just had an election in the United Kingdom at the end of last week. We have a new government. Um, so it's a word on democracy briefly. First of all, let me congratulate Kano and Nigeria on the 25th celebration of the Day of Democracy last month. The UK strongly backs the rule of law, democratic principles and good governments as a route to advancement in Nigeria and around the world. And seen in the United Kingdom a peaceful transfer of power um, with the new Prime Minister saying country first, party second, um, and our outgoing Prime Minister taking responsibility for his defeat, both of them stressing the importance of the democratic process and accountability leaders to their people. And also particularly proud to see in the United Kingdom a cabinet that is half women, so half of our senior ministers in the United Kingdom are women. And our parliament, our House of Commons, now has over 240 uh, members of, of uh, parliament who are women, which is a record high for us. And it's obviously a subject dear to both uh, my heart and to Cynthia's as, as women leaders in the British government system. Back in 1996, another Labour Prime Minister, Tony Blair, announced that his top three priorities would be education, education, education. His successor as Prime Minister, Gordon Brown, said, education cannot wait. And we see a strong parallel here in Parno with the Honourable Government last month declaring a state of education. Thank you, Your Excellency. To tackle a range of challenges that's holding back quality education uh, here in Kano for girls and boys. The UK is proud of its range of partnerships with the government of Nigeria over the years, and this includes education. Our new go UK government will continue to prioritise development, and as they work out their plans for that, we'll know they'll remain committed to countries like Nigeria, committed to Nigeria, that I'm certain, um, and women and girls, and education for women and girls will continue to be an important theme through our programmes. Through the British Council, we're supporting English language and teaching skills, um, and skills development, and promoting trans-educational partnerships between higher education institutions and organisations, so that education systems can better respond to labour market demands and learner needs. And our the partnership for learning for all in Nigerian education, also known as PLAIN, has worked here in Kano with other normal, uh, northern states and the federal government since 2019 to support a more inclusive and effective basic education system by improving foundational skills. Turning to today's education conference, we're delighted that the PLAIN team have been able to get behind Kano's crucial policy to address the state of education. Uh, the state of emergency in education here so quickly with a rapid push to help the organization of this conference. Uh, yesterday, 
um, I visited a state school. I was pleased to see women's leadership there, pleased to see attendance figures high, and pleased to see children in school and learning. But in that school in Kadawa Ngogo, uh, LGA, I was also sorry to see hundreds of children to one teacher sitting on a cement floor with not many teaching materials and with no roof and no perimeter security. So I wish the governor, His Excellency Governor Abba and his team good luck as they work to deliver his pledge on totally overhauling education in Kano State and delivering their roadmap to kick-starting the journey to quality and accessible education. It's only with collaborations like this, with the best minds and years of experience gathered, that a course can be charted to convert political will into sustainable action. I wish you all every success for, for fruit, fruitful deliberations that provide consensus on the way ahead. The children, our children, deserve nothing less, and Kano and Nigeria's future prosperity and stability depend on it. Education cannot indeed wait. Thank you. Thank you. Please, let's appreciate Ms. Jill Lever once more. She is uh, the uh, Deputy High Commissioner, British High Commission in Nigeria. She really gave us what we expect out of her. Uh, somebody that has been here, she's gone around the schools and she's seen the level of dilapidation and decay in the system. And of course, when you hear someone says, recovery it means something is lost a lot of things has been lost in the system and the government of the state is willing to recover back and through this kind of um, conference as a beginner we'll be able to get to somewhere well, thank you very much for that speech and that's an opening remarks let me uh, your excellency kindly with your permission to acknowledge the presence of the Board of Trustees Chairman, Ariwa Consultative Forum, the Wazir Nduse Alhaji Bashir Alhaji is here with us. Let's appreciate him, please. Thank you. Next, Your Excellency, it's your daughter, since you're the head. When I say your daughter, anybody in Kano and Jigawa now should be the son and daughter of His Excellency the executive governor of Kano. Let me appreciate as I invite for her keynote address on repositioning education in Kano State, navigating the pathway to excellence as the theme of the conference to invite a professor of curriculum studies at Bayer University, Kano, our mother, our daughter, I believe some will say that, but me, my mother, and of course, a one-time former uh, minister in the Federal Republic and one of the most vibrant ministers. Please appreciate as we invite Professor Rukaya Ahmad Rupai, OON. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kano State, Engineer Abakabir Yusuf, all members of the high table, and distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I was expecting that the keynote address would be projected, but maybe something happened, I'm not sure. I have two versions. The main keynote address has been submitted, and I'm presenting the PowerPoint version. So it's maybe a summary of the actual keynote address. The objectives of my address are as follows. To highlight challenges of basic education in Kano State. But before that, let me start by wholeheartedly congratulating His Excellency for boldly declaring state of emergency in the education sector. 
Excellent, Your Excellency, I congratulate you. I congratulate all people of Kano Sen, and even us that are neighbors, and maybe those living with you, we are also very happy for that. And we wish you well, because it's one thing to declare, and it's also another thing to implement. So we are wishing you well. We are wishing you well. And also to present solutions towards addressing the challenges and also provide an initial action plan so that we implement what we are willing to see in the education sector in Kano State. As a whole background, Kano State is historically a global center of excellence in terms of commerce, in terms of culture, in terms of learning and politics. And it has diverse parts of Nigeria, diverse parts of Nigeria also depend on Kano on both raw and finished goods. It is a home to great entrepreneurs, and people are always relying on Kano for several other things. So despite remaining a center of commerce and industry, there are missing links in its reputation for excellence. This continued to affect the growth of economic, social, and other activities. The state in the recent past has not kept pace with the requirements for sustainable development. And the key to this is certainly the existence of an education sector that takes into account the present and future requirements of the state. The challenges of basic education as a historical center of learning cannot should lead the way in the delivery of quality education. Neglect of education over the years has eroded progress in diverse areas. And there are several challenges, including that of out-of-school children. I wish you can see, because I have a table that is showing the zonal representation in terms of out-of-school children. If we look at the North Central states, the highest number with out-of-school children in the North Central is Niger State with 42.8%. The lowest in that zone is uh, FCT, which is 12.8%. And when we go to the Northeast, the highest out-of-school out children in the Northeast is Yobi with 62.9%. Followed by Bochi, 55%, Borno, 54%, and then the lowest there is Adamawa with 21.9%. When we go to the, our own, that is Northwestern states, the highest with, the, with out of school children in the Northwest is Kebbi State. Kebbi is having 67.6% out of school, followed by Sokoto, 66.4%, and then Zampara, 61.3% all within Kebbi Sokoto axis. And then, of course, followed by Chikawa, 51.1%. And then we have Kasina, 45%. And here, Kano is having 39.2% out of school. And that the one with the lowest number of out of school is Kaduna, with 21.9%. And this scenario in the north is quite different from that scenario in the southern part of the country. When we look at the southeastern states, the one with the highest number of out of school in the southeast is Enugu, which has only 7.5% out of school. And then the one that is having the lowest there, uh, sorry, Ebonyi is having 7.7%, then Enugu 7.5%. And the one with the lowest there is Anambra, with just 2.9% out of school. And when you go to the south-south, the one with the highest number out of school is Edo State, with just 11.3%. And then the one with the lowest there is Rivers with 7 point, sorry, Ayelsa, 7.4%. And in the southwest, the one with the highest, we have like two. Oyo is having 20.9% out of school. Ogo is having 20.5% out of school. But then the one with the lowest there is Ekiti State with just 5.1% out of school. So the two scenarios are actually different. Then the high number of out of school children Access to basic education for Kano State children is extremely poor. The state has an estimated 1 million out of school children. Some say 800 plus, some 900 plus, but it's about 1 million that are running out of school. This translates to 39% of school age children not participating in education, and a substantial number of these are girls. Poor infrastructure for education. Infrastructure for education in the state is extremely poor and inadequate. I'm happy that the governor himself, His Excellency, has identified all these challenges. So I'm not going deeper into that, because he has already presented in his declaration all these problems. 
Most of them are not conducive for learning, they are not child friendly, and they are a challenge of sanitation. And the select, a selection of challenges in facilities in schools in Kano State, based on a research which I happen to have led by Sir Ahmed Bello Model Foundation, which was conducted some years back, the classroom sufficiency in Kano State was 36.7%, libraries and textbooks 50%, laboratories 32.2%, Water supply 64.1%, power supply 40.6%, computers 10.8%, and internet access 9.5%. Those are the research that we have conducted. And the teaching and learning resources, we have inadequate, inadequate number of qualified teachers, low incentive schemes to attract and retain qualified teachers, inadequate teaching and learning materials, laboratories and workshops, and libraries and lack of institutional development and political will. There has been poor political will in the development of the education, but we are happy that we are having one which we hope that will deliver. And we have confidence in this. <laughs> institutional approach to education management is also extremely poor. And we believe that with the effort that will be made in the next few years, that we can, we can arrive somewhere. So it's excellency resolved to address the challenges of basic education in the state. He had a declaration of emergency on the sector and aligned with his commitment to transforming education in the state. The governor, His Excellency Engineer Abu Kabir Yusuf, declared a set of emergency on education in the sector. And he declared that as your elected governor, entrusted with solemn responsibility of steering our state towards prosperity and progress, I cannot ignore the glaring reality that confronts us in the realm of education. We must therefore take radical but practical steps to reposition education provisioning in our states. We pray for you, sir. Inshallah, you deliver. So his vision in declaring a set of emergency education in kind of state includes, as he has mentioned, that every school, a good school, every child and enrolled child, every student and engaged learner, every teacher a caring educator, Every parent a supportive partner and committed investor in human capital development. And we pray that it happens. His Excellency's vision indicates his understanding of what is needed for a quality basic education system, including implementation of reforms, mobilization of resources, availability of infrastructure, teaching and learning resources. They are also, these are also demonstrated by allocation of 29.5% of the said budget to education plans to and his plan to construct 300 laboratories and 1,000 classrooms. Education is a key to dynamism. His Excellency's declaration is the very key to our development. It is in line with key national and legal and policy provisions. It will develop citizens to be assets to society and ensure the availability of quality human resources. It will ensure the participation of youth in the national economy and it will strengthen the state and its competitive standing in the global environment. The key considerations for delivering the emergency of education. In order to ensure the attainment of His Excellency's vision of education, what kind of state, a number of actions are necessary. And this is the main presentation because my, my part is to provide some solutions that hopefully, if they are followed, will arrive somewhere. And some of these are highlighted below. Number one, needs assessment. A comprehensive needs assessment of basic and secondary education in the state should be carried out that covers all schools. This will identify issues in relation to access, the actual number of learners, and those not participating in education. And we'll look at the issue of quality in terms of infrastructure, in terms of teachers, in terms of teaching and learning materials. Strategic approach. Success in implementing His Excellency's vision is based on having a strategic approach. Comprehensive medium-term education strategic document should be developed for the state. This should be the first line of action. It will provide a coordinated approach to addressing the challenges. It will identify key strategies and activities, provide information or responsibilities for action, and also provide timeline for implementation of goals. The political will is also key to attaining the vision. His Excellency has already done so by having this about 30% of the budget to education. 
and that we hope will be followed by actual release of funds. This must be sustained through commitment of relevant agencies and their officials, including State Ministry of Education. I'm happy the Honorable Minister is here and happy to have had his, his own part. The State Universal Basic Education Board, the local education authorities and the schools, they all need to be rally around His Excellency in order for the, build, for the vision to emerge. It's one thing for the governor to have his political will, but then if the agents are not really participating in what is happening, then nothing will happen. We've been in the office thinking that things are happening, and unfortunately, maybe they're not happening elsewhere. So we really need to be, have, have our hands on deck. Success of the vision of His Excellency is also dependent on institutional approach. Emphasis should therefore be on sustained institutional development among education agencies, from the ministries, agencies, and schools. Every institution must have full competence of officials with the capacities for efficient implementation of education programs. The level of strengthening of national systems. The national systems are key to success in the implementation of quality education programs. The state must work on ensuring the availability of this. This includes the issue of monitoring and evaluation, ensuring continuous and efficient monitoring and evaluation programs, impl program implementation, and then provide information on stages of implementation and support necessary review of implementation processes and enhance success. And then data collection and management. We need to ensure the availability of accurate and reliable data. This is one thing that is also worrying us all over the country. We do not have that reliable data to work with. Somebody will say 1 million, somebody will say 800, somebody will say 900, and they all have their sources. So we really need to work on data. It will support, among other things, decision making and efficient allocation of resources. Guidance and counseling, it, has to support the, it is to support the success of teaching and learning. Every school must have a professional in this area. They will support learners, teachers, and parents towards quality outcome. They also support better success in the personal and professional aspirations of learners. Teacher development needs assessment. This ensures the availability of information on the set of teachers in the state. It will help the state to make accurate decisions regarding teacher needs for the system. Monitoring of learning achievement. This also supports the monitoring of learning in schools. It will provide information on the effectiveness of the education programs. This will enable decisions on approaches that are effective and those that may need revision to enhance further effectiveness. Promoting access to basic education. Due to the high number of out-of-school children, there needs to be programs aimed at promoting access to basic education. This is in line with His Excellency's vision to provide education opportunities for all children. Key strategies that need to be strengthened include integrating basic education into Islamic education. There should be collaboration with the Quranic schools. Basic education should be integrated into the programs of the schools. This will enable the Almajra to have the best of both worlds. It will open them up to greater opportunities in society. Conditional grants. Conditional grants to parents should also be strengthened. This is especially to encourage girls' education, as some parents use their daughters to fend for their families. The state should ensure that federal programs benefit cannot set up proportionately. The conditional grants will also help to address the challenge of poverty in society. Textbooks and school uniforms. Key textbooks and school uniforms must also be made available to all learners. This one also I need to explain. I know we have a large number of students in school in Kano. So can we really provide school uniform to all of them? If we can find, that's the best we can. But if we cannot, we need to have a plan. Are we starting from year one? We have all year one this year. And then next year we move to year two. Next year to year three. There has to be a program in terms of achieving the issue of school uniform. But sir, if you can do it for all, I think it is better. This will help to remove the pressure from parents on the procurement of this for their children. His Excellency's initiative on this is also an excellent step. The issue of grand child education will also be given the prime of place. Girls must be provided with the opportunities to excel. Incentive schemes must be provided to encourage girls' enrollment. This includes grants to parents, to discourage sending them to work, to support the family, provision of textbooks and uniforms, availability of female teachers, 
and provision of exclusive sanitation facilities. This appears to be something that is minor, but it is very critical to girls. So we need to take attention, to put attention on sanitation facilities. Educating the Almajari, they keep up most of the out-of-school children. They make up most of the out-of-school children in Nigeria, particularly in our zone, especially here in Kano. They should therefore be targeted in the design of programs for access to education. They should be targeted for participation in technical and vocational education programs. This will support them with skills to function better in society. And we need to have an, an approach that probably will help to have opportunity. If I can make a recall, a recall, if we can recall back, when I had the opportunity to be a minister of education in the country, there was this issue of advisory education. And what we did at that time was to identify all the areas, all the states, particularly all the northern states, and some two or three states in the southern part, who also are having problems of out of school children. And we had a design. We built schools, some of them were aborted, some of them were there, and then we had a program that every year, each state will now look at their own situation and then continue to enroll this out of school children, particularly this advisory. So that in the next five, ten years, at our vision that time, we will not have any advisory out of school. But unfortunately, because of the nature of the country, some things will not really continue. Some of the schools were even converted to something else. So we need to do something, sir, on this advisory issue. Promoting the quality of education, ensuring the quality of education delivery is also key to attaining His Excellency's vision of education. The key elements for quality, which must be given attention also, are as follows. The issue of infrastructure, we need to have quality infrastructure for the delivery of education programs. His Excellency has already shown his commitment to this through his pronouncements. In addition to new ones, existing infrastructure must be comprehensively rehabilitated to meet 21st century standard. Teaching and learning resources. Teaching and learning resources must also be adequate for all teachers and learners. This includes the textbooks, laboratories, workshops, and libraries. Integration of te technology in teaching and learning. Integration of technology in teaching and learning process must also be emphasized. Digital literacy should be emphasized for teachers and learners. Computer laboratories must also be provided with access to diverse devices for teaching and learning. A letter to this is also provision of access to internet and later services to enhance the teaching and learning processes. Teacher recruitment, development, and retention. Teachers are responsible for the delivery of the curriculum and therefore central to education. So attention must be given to the recruitment and retention of qualified teachers. Central schemes for retention must be provided. This is professional development, housing, and transport. Technical and vocational education. Technical and vocational education will also be given emphasis in His Excellency's vision on education. This is because of the role of this type of education in developing skills and capacities for industries. Youth should be mobilized to actively participate in teach technical and vocational education. They can be attracted, they can be attached to established organizations to further develop their skills in these areas. Funding and funding sources. Availability of funds is also key to the implementation of the vision of His Excellency on Education. If there are no funds, whatever plan we may have, we really not. So diverse sources must be explored to ensure sustainable funding of the programs. Key funding sources for the implementation of education programs also include the following. Number one, budgetary allocation for education. It is the primary source of funding. And we're happy to have, happy to have about 30% for education for Kano, which is a very good step in the right direction. This must be released as and when do you. And the political commitment of His Excellency is expected to ensure that this happens. Intervention funds. Intervention funds also, such as those from UBEC, is also very essential to support implementation of the programs. The state must also provide its counterpart funds, as and when do you. Organized private sector through corporate social responsibility are also key supporters of education. The state should explore this comprehensively. It should also collaborate with the large base of private sectors in the state. Development partners, I'm happy to have some of them here. Kano State has in the past been supported by development partners in the areas of education. The state should continue to explore this and also use experiences gained from their interventions 
to further develop education in the state. And the public-private partnership is also critical. The state should explore this and utilize the PPP in the development of infrastructure. This will enable them to raise long-term capital for the implementation of immediate needs of education in the state. Long-term financing of education. The state can also explore long-term finance for the implementation of education programs. This includes sourcing long-term finance, which can be for a term of up to 25 years from organizations such as the World Bank, Islamic Development Bank, Africa Development Bank, and others. Special interventions from the federal government. These are emphasized that the uniqueness of Kano State means that it is essential to the development of Nigeria. The federal government, therefore, needs to provide special support to complement the efforts of the state. I'm happy to have the representative of his honorable, the Honorable Minister of Education, and I hope you will pass this information, that there is need for a special intervention for some of the states, but the number one state is Kano State. With a large number of out-of-school children, with a large number of population, Apart from the UBEC funding and others, there's supposed to be something special that will also attract people to have them in school. So you please tell that. So special intervention in Kano and later social services will help to boost development both in the state and in the country. There could be other states in the, in the, in the country, but Kano is number one, definitely. Then direct disbursement of funds to schools. Schools are responsible for the implementation of education programs. Most of the time, they have little resources to do this. As part of its reform, the state should work on dispersing funds directly to schools to implement programs based on their identified needs. This will enable the schools to be held accountable for the performance of learners and their work. The capacities of school officials should also be strengthened to plan and implement their programs. Partnership with external agencies. The state should continue to seek partnership with internal and external agencies to support education quality. Partnerships could be in the areas of funding, sharing resources, training and capacity development. Advocacy and community participation. Community participation is key to the success of the implementation of the education programs. Advocacy and enlightenment are key to this. There should be consistent advocacy and enlightenment of these programs. This should also involve traditional, religious and community leaders as well as non-governmental organizations. Sometimes we may have passed this. But since we are still having this large number out of, out, of, out of school, we need to also revisit earlier programs or earlier interventions or earlier methods. So what I did at the end, Your Excellency, is provide a sketchy initial action plan, which will help us to deliver in terms of all the pronouncements that we have made. To support the attainment of the vision of His Excellency, an initial suggested action plan is put forward as follows. I have activity, justification, responsibility, and timeline. Number one, Your Excellency, is to appoint a team for development of state medium-term education sector plan. The availability of strategic document to guide the attainment of the governor's vision, the education vision. And the responsibility here, Your Excellency, is your own. It is your baby, it is your own, and then, of course, your honorable commissioner will also assist you. And this, I expect that you can do this within the month of July. Have a team to work on this, to come up with something. Within the month, you can do that. And then secondly, develop education strategic plan. Availability of a document that provides direction in achieving the state education goals, based on analysis of challenges and comprehensive stakeholder input. This will lead us to have a strategic plan or develop a strategic plan. So in this case, we are developing that plan. And I expect that to be done in the month of October. So by October, we can have a plan ready for implementation. And then in the same October, sir, we expect that you can unveil or launch the state education strategic plan. This will highlight the details of strategic plan to ensure that the wider stakeholder community are aware of their roles in the success of the plan. And then this is fairly, sir, your own responsibility. And this we expect that by October also it is done. And the same thing to be done is in October is also to appoint implementation monitoring team, and then also implementation team. So you have two teams here. The team that will monitor the implementation and the team that will do the implementation. So steering committee to oversee implementation and implementation team to work closely with agencies and groups in implementation. Presentation to stakeholders should be done every three months on the progress of implementation. This is the only way sir, that you can check 
whether what you want is being achieved. So after every month, your team will now sit down, and then they will now walk over and see wherever we have problems, then we can now revisit, and then we can do something else. And this is on your excellency, as well as your honorable commissioner of education. And this also, we expect that by October, it is done. So the plan is that by October, we have a plan with us. And then we have a team that will work on the plan. And with this, I'm sure, inshallah, things will work out well. So in conclusion, I will need to say, Canada said is one of the most strategic states in Nigeria. Its success is Nigeria's success and can lead to competitive advantage. Quality education is key to maintaining Canada's strategic position. And neglect of the sector over the years has led to challenges. His Excellency, Engineer Abu Kabir Yusuf, has declared emergency on the education sector to address these challenges through comprehensive reform. He must be supported from every angle to ensure the success of the plan, the vision. It is my hope that this presentation will provide some help towards attaining this vision. I hope so, sir. I congratulate you. And I thank you for listening. Thank you for this rich, well-articulated and presented presentation. Please let's appreciate Mama, please. Put your hands together. Well, uh, no one will really surprise on the, the kind of outcome of what is expected out of uh, Professor Rukaya to Ahmed Rufai. After all, she's um, the first female professor in Northwestern Nigeria in any field. Please, let's appreciate her one more time. Thank you very much, Props. You really send a lot of messages to many groups and to many sections in the country and even abroad. You requested for a special intervention to states that has been devastated by a serious neglect in the education sector and you prefer, as you say, Kano, because of the number of out of schools and other things and dissidents that surrounds the states. And that's a very big one. But let me tell you a story. Kano State has been having an education law since 1964, without review all. It is His Excellency now that is reviewing the law. Please, shall we appreciate him for doing this? And he's not only reviewing. His Excellency is collaborating FCDO plan to do that. And when they confronted him, sir, what do we do with this law? He says, Repel it, after all. Please, let's appreciate His Excellency. It's not even reviewable, but we're repelling the law to make it brand new so that the state, uh, the state can enjoy a new education law. You cannot be having a law standing for 60 years. Haba, it's too old a law. And that's how devastating the sector is. We've been operating on a law that is, I don't want to say obsolete because I have a son here. A synod advocate, and don't know how to refer to a law, obsolete, or whatever nature. So we thank you very much, Ajia, for that speech, and of course, the state government for doing a lot in the sector. And for us to forge ahead, let me invite for uh, his address, and of course, the, the speech by the chair of the day. But I did mention earlier on that the chairman of today's occasion is uh, the secretary to the state government, in person of Malam Abdullahi Bapa Bichi, who is the doctor in his own field. Please, let's appreciate the chairman. He'll be presenting his speech. Thank you, sir. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyul kareem. Your Excellency, Gabna Abba Kabir Yusuf, the governor of Kano State, the people's governor, the compassionate governor, the governor of education. <laughs> Your Excellency, Ambassador Jill, 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 Ambassador Jill Cleave, I suppose. 
Jill Le Ambassador Jill Lever, the Acting High Commissioner, British High Commissioner to Nigeria, the Representative Honorable Minister and the Director, Basic Education of the Federal Ministry of Education, uh, distinguished members of National Assembly, members of the Executive Council of Kano State here present, representatives of Ario Consultative Forum, uh, development partners such as the United Nations Family, UNICEF, and FCDO, uh, distinguished invited guests and participants, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It is with great respect and gratitude that I welcome His Excellency Governor Abbeke Yusuf, the Executive Governor of Kano State, to this important education recovery conference. Your Excellency, your presence at this important and historic event is a demonstration of leadership and your personal commitment to education and the passion and the commitment of this administration to revitalize our education sector and develop our state's human capital. The education family respectfully welcomes you to this conference and with your permission, I would also like to welcome His Excellency, the Deputy Governor, Comrade Amin Abdesalam Gorzu, other distinguished members of National Assembly, members of the State House of Assembly, Honorable Commissioners and members of the State Executive Council, and all other invited personalities who have graced this occasion. Permit me, Your Excellency, to also especially thank Her Excellency Ambassador Jill Lever, the Acting British High Commissioner to Nigeria, for her interest and continuous support to the education sector in Kano State. I would like to also thank all cabinet members in the State Executive Council for the robust discussion at the State Executive Council meeting that has now culminated into this conference. I thank you all and I hope that at the end of this conference we will all come to better appreciate and place even higher premium on the necessity to rejuvenate and overhaul the education provisioning in the state. As we all know, no people can rise, can rise above the standard of their education because it is education that serves as the springboard for every kind of development. If education is weak and dysfunctional, society and its development will also be weak and dysfunctional. And all change, including the very change that we are catalyzing, must begin with education. Because it is education that shapes, corrects, and restores society. But to be able to restore order to society, education has to be made a leading priority. This truism is valid for every society and is of particular relevance to our own society, which we all agree is confronted with a litany of challenges and deficits. Education offers us the knowledge, the tools, the skills, the attitude with which to address and surmount these challenges, to correct and overcome inhibiting deficits, and to put our state on the path of accelerated development and sustainable prosperity. Your Excellency, permit me to share a short story I read about the Chinese. In their determination to, to build and live in a peaceful society, the Chinese built the Great Wall, believing that it will, be, it will keep invaders at bay because they thought that it was impossible for anyone to scale it, given its unsurmountable height. However, within the first century, of its construction, of the construction of the war, the Chinese were invaded three times. Every time the invaders came, they had no need to climb over the wall because each time they came, they were able to bribe the guards on duty at the gate and the gate was opened for them. The Chinese took pains to build the wall, but they forgot to build the character of the guards who were supposed to secure the walls. The great lesson of this story is that character building precedes the world building. And character is everything. As one of the Orientalists once said, if you want to destroy the civilization of a people, there are three ways of doing, of doing so. One, destroy the family structure. Two, destroy their education system. And three, demean and belittle their, and belittle their role models. In order to destroy the family, all you need to do is to undermine the role of the mother. To destroy education, you should give no importance to the teacher so that the students despise her. Then to demean the role models, you should undermine the scholars, cast doubt on them until no one listens to them or follows their teachings. For when a conscious mother disappears, and when a dedicated teacher cannot be found, and when role models are ignored, who is there to teach the younger ones values? If the foregoing story indicates anything, it is the strong message that the entirety of civilization is at risk 
in great peril when access to proper and quality education is denied to the majority of its citizens. Such a denial can lead to a number of undesirable consequences, the most pernicious of which are value erosion and character failure among the youth who are supposed to become leaders of the society. The signs of such value erosion and character failure in our young population are already there for us to see. The rise in the incidence of, of corruption, moral decadence, juvenile delinquency, examination malpractices, cultism and drug abuse uh, uh, among our youth is symptomatic of this malaise and indicative of such value erosion. This is an warning that indeed for our society, the enemy is already at the gate, is already at the city gate. The advancement of this enemy must be checked and stopped immediately. Education alone offers us the tool to confront this enemy, to defeat its enemy, and bring about and institutionalize change. Yes, education offers, offers us the way out of our current vicious cycle and to the emergence of an equitable and stable society characterized by inclusive development and driven by positive values. Education is our collective responsibility and its failure can well be taken as the failure of the entire society. We are all involved in education because it affects us all. But from, but from what has happened to our education since independence, it is clear that our educational system has failed our people and has been unable to prepare our children for life as responsible and creative citizens of the 21st century. Our inability to meet our inability to meet the commitments of the Millennium Development Goals adequately illustrates the extent of such failure. In short, our education is not achieving the desired results, and there is a need for urgent action. Thankfully, Governor Abakabir Yusuf has already taken the bold step by declaring emergency on education in the state. We all know we. We all know the challenges, and they are there at all levels, basic, post-basic, and tertiary levels. Basic education constitutes the foundation, and it has to be given all the attention it deserves. We need to ask questions on what we teach and who does the teach. As it happens to the Chinese, our national security itself, itself may be in grave danger unless we give priority to education in our recon, in our national recon. At the same time, we must also create the enabling conditions that will enable tertiary institutions to play crucial roles as the engines that drive that drives national thinking and lead the application of research and development to all facets of our development. It is also high time we pay attention to teachers and to, and to teaching as a profession. Mass literacy, adult education, distance learning, nomadic education, girl child education, and the rest are all very important but we cannot deliver them without giving respectability and reviewed stature to the teacher. We must learn to make education attractive to the best brains, make it, make it steady free, its outcome lucrative, and accord, it, and accord it the respect it deserves. That is why we must attract and retain the best brains into the classrooms as it is being done in other, in other societies of the world. In Germany and Finland, for example, the highest paid professionals are the teachers. They are, better than, they, they are paid better than judges, doctors, engineers, accountants, and so on. When former, Chancellor Angela Merkel, when former Chancellor Angela Merkel was asked by the engineers, doctors, and judges to pay them same salary as teachers, she told them, how can I compare you to those who taught you? <laughs> this, is the, this is the logical perception and attitude that our leadership should have of education and teachers. I am strongly persuaded that if we offer automatic scholarship to students who take education and automatic employment and preferential compensation package to those who take to teaching as a profession, <coughs> our system will improve tremendously. If we give regulatory agencies the teeth to bite and to do their work, mediocre teachers will soon disappear from our classroom. If we insist on professionalism, with appropriate deadlines as, as set for those who teach. The situation will improve phenomenally. 
we can minimize and in due course eliminate mediocrity in the education sector. There is need to harmonize the learning and teaching that transpire in our tertiary education institutions, as well as redefine our goals periodically. Since the creation of Kano State in the late 60s and up to mid-80s, our state had had periodic development plan, and we must return to development planning if our state is to develop, or else it will, be, it will remain a vast landscape of projects, of unconnected projects, uncon uh, and, and disconnected researchers, researchers unable to connect their work with the state development policies and vision. Our education should drive our state development objectives, and we need to carry the universities and other tertiary education institutions along. Uh, thankfully, His Excellency Governor Abba Kabirisu has already commenced the revival initiative for vocational education centers and technical colleges in our state. <laughs> Your Excellency, sir, to achieve the desired change that education needs, there is need for improved, for improved funding and a measure of political will in government. These challenges are not insurmountable. What is needed is vastly improved funding accompanied by a strong political will. The strong political will needed to do all this is clearly present in this administration. What, what this government must now do is to make the funds available. Luckily, Governor Abba Kabir Yusuf has made an unprecedented allocation of almost 30% of this year's budget to education. This is a clear expression of the strongest political will to turn around the fortunes of education provisioning in the state. We thank you most sincerely for we thank we thank you most sincerely, Your Excellency, for your commitment to education. Your Excellency, nobody has the moral and the resource capacity to intervene promptly, substantially and sustainably in all areas of education provisioning better than the government. Uh, unfortunately, from nineteen ninety nine to date, the annual budgetary allocation to education has always been between 4% and 10%. None of the first 10 most popular states in the country, other than Kano State, allocates less than 20% of its annual budgetary allocation until now, when we allocated almost 30%. <laughs> Your Excellencies, Honorable Commissioners, I want to once again welcome you all to this conference, and I thank you for coming to be part of it. I honestly hope that by the end of this conference, we will, have, we, will have, we will have arrived at actionable strategies and hopefully an implementation plan that will change the fortune of education in our state. All change must begin with education because if we get education right, all the other areas of our life will be right and they will all fall in line. <laughs> Finally, I also want to appreciate the team of experts from FCDO, State Minister of Education and Plan and ACF that work strenuously on planning this conference. Your Excellency, I do not intend to be a barrier between you and what these experts have to say. I will therefore promptly sit, I will therefore promptly sit down. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your attention and I wish us successful day. Thank you. Thank you. That has been the speech of uh, the chair, person of today's session, in person of Dr. Abdullahi Baba Bichi, the Secretary of State Government. Please let's appreciate him. He's a doctor of mathematics, Lesabi. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, distinguished guests esteemed participants in today's occasion. It's about time for us to go into the goodwill messages. We have partners, people that are working seriously in the sector, as well as those that we would like them to talk to us as we convene in this conference for education recovery in Kano. First of all, Your Excellency, with your permission, I would like to invite uh, a co-convener of this conference for a goodwill message, Ariwa Consultative Forum. Thank you. I understand the chairman, ACF Board of Trustees, 
Alaji Bashir Al Hatu is here to speak on behalf of his organization. Please let's appreciate him. Thank you. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Your Excellency, Governor of Kano State, Engineer Abu Kabir Yusuf. the representative of the Minister of Education, the secretary to the state government, the head of service, my younger brother, Abdullah, the acting British High Commissioner, and the development director, Commonwealth and Foreign Office, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, for me and the ACF, this is a very historic occasion. So therefore, I want to begin by thanking very much His Excellency, the Governor, who first of all saw me sitting in the third row, where I could see everybody very clearly including himself, and I was feeling very proud that someone who used to be my son, but now the role has reversed. <laughs> and someone I have always been proud of is sitting today as our governor. <laughs> but when he intended to promote me to the first row, my seat was behind this huge black thing and I was completely blocked, I could not see His Excellency. <laughs> so for every advantage, there could be some disadvantages. Your Excellency, the truth is, education had, in the last 20, 30 years, being in an emergency situation. But somehow, you are the only one with the courage, foresight, and political will to officially declare the emergency. <laughs> this, of course, has made you into a pathfinder. You are now the leader, and you now have to prove that uh, taking up this responsibility, you are capable of doing, as I believe you are, and therefore, hopefully, other northern states will uh, follow. The, the depth of the rot of education in northern Nigeria can all be imagined. And somehow over the years, all of us had been playing what is called ostrich syndrome. We know the problem, it had always been there, and it's been growing from bad to worse. But very little effort has been made. Successive governments have always hoped that their successors will come and take care of the problem. Today you have come out, you have accepted to take care of the problem, and the only way we can assist you is to wish you well and to pray that you become totally successful in this undertaking. You have, you have declared a war, and there are so many wars for you to declare. One of the wars, of course, while you are talking about the education and how low it has gone down, you must also look at the out-of-school children. The number of the out-of-school children has been growing 
every single day of our life. Why? Because those who are least capable of affording to bring and take care of children and educating them are the most producers of children in northern Nigeria. And nothing or very little has been done in, in terms of advocacy for people to start cutting their court according to their size. I have a short uh, story to tell. My wife lost a relative recently in one of the local governments very near Kano. So she decided to bring his children into our house and take them to school, private school. They were brought back into, the, into Kano from a secondary school and they are in SS, that means senior secondary school section. So I called one of my friends who had a private school and runs a very successful run and ask him to take them in. He said, I said, they are senior secondary school uh, students, so no problem. He said, ah, no, that's not how we will do it. We will first go and examine them and so we can know exactly what level they will fit into. And after examining them, he came back to me and he said, Although they are in senior secondary school, their level is primary two. <laughs> primary two. And they are already fairly grown up. There is nothing else you can do other than find them some vocational training and train them to be some, some professional in some certain field. In northern Nigeria today, even the, profession, even the vocational training, although efforts are all over, but the impact honestly has not been had as it should. This is the problem of education. Your Excellency, I know you know better than I do. A senior secondary school child is no better than a primary two student in a private school in the same environment how do you now upgrade our government schools to the level of this and i hope in your eight years inshallah and, and beyond you are going to hand over the mantle the seriousness, the determination, and your commitment to see that education has now occupied the position in our society that it ought to have occupied all this time. I bring you good wishes and best regards from the Arewa Consultative Forum, a political but non-partisan, uh, socio-cultural <laughs> socio umbrella organization in northern Nigeria. Our effort, a lot of it goes into propagation and sensitization concerning education and the need for our people to recognize that they must educate their children. Can only do so if they produce enough for them to ensure that their education is guaranteed. That also, sir, is part of your next war. People must begin to appreciate that without education, very little can be achieved in our society, especially today. I don't want to take your time. We thank you very much for allowing us to associate with this effort. History is going to record you in gold letters that we have.
you have the courage and the capacity to think right and that is what we all our leaders should be doing if they had been doing this over the last 20 30 years we would not have been in the dire need that we are today i thank you very much i wish you the best i wish the organizers and this conference uh, the very best of uh, success and we look forward to continuous association with this kind of effort so that even us in AACF will be able to record our success through this kind of your effort. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The board, uh, board of trustees chair, Ariel Consultative Forum, Please let's appreciate him one more time. We understand we are running against time. So I would like all goodwill message uh, readers should please do that in one minute. Ariel Consultative Forum is a co convener in this conference. So let's uh, forget it and invite Your Excellency, the World Bank Group. Please come and give us the goodwill message. Thank you. World Bank. Thank you. World Bank. All right. UNICEF. UNICEF is here. Please let's appreciate United Nations Children's Emergency Funds representative here. Thank you. Uh, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kano State. Uh, all other protocols duly are respectably observed. Uh, on behalf of UNICEF, and indeed my own behalf, I want to thank the organizers and the state government of Kano State for organizing this conference. Uh, the conference comes at an opportune time when Nigeria and Kano in particular is daunted with a twin challenge of high burden of out-of-school children and the learning poverty. Uh, this conference also comes barely a month after His Excellency, the State Governor of Kano State, declared education as an emergency in Kano and thus requires emergency response measures. Uh, we have had a lot of data on Nigeria in general about out-of-school children and about the learning poverty. And I think there is no better time that we need to walk through it and make sure that every child is in school, every child learns, and every child acquires some skills for the future. I really want to use this one minute to appreciate the organizers of this conference uh, uh, for thinking of what is going to be productive in the next many decades and many centuries. Every child in UNICEF matters. Every child deserves all the privilege and opportunities to be able to make his life. Thank you very much for UNICEF. Uh, we want to assure you that um, we are ready to support at all times. We are always ready and very close to you and to the communities where you are going to provide all the services. And we assure you that this is just the beginning. Thank you very much, and all the best. Thank you. Madam Muteka, UNICEF, uh, please, uh, let's invite, all right. Let's invite for the Goodwill message as well. You say it, USAID, you say it. All right. Let's inform all our audiences outside that this our conference has been telecast via television stations across the country and of course all over the world we have the NTA AIT Trust TV our local television ARTV as well as several radio stations within Kano covering it live next is Lafia please goodwill message Lafia working in the uh, health sector let's appreciate Sakepa please it's one 
civil society group that is working seriously in the education sector. And the doctor is here. Please say we appreciate him, please, for his goodwill message. Thank you. Your Excellency, our governor, the governor of education, I used to call him my governor because all my life the campaign is for education and the governor now is for education. Thank you, sir, always. Sakefa is an advocacy and accountability platform which is committed to supporting government and other partners for us to have what we call a formidable level and education for all. Sir, we thank you and the partners conference for this giant stride. But we are particularly concerned about the increasing number of out of school in Kano State. And therefore, we feel on our part there is a need for the government to look inward into other sectors in the non formal subsector, which will reduce a great number of out of school in Kano State. As this conference goes on, we are soliciting that the governor should look inward into the Agency for Mass Education and the Quranic Education Board is a platform that can reduce a great number of out-of-school children. Because there is a correlation between the education of parents at in terms of literacy and that of their children. We wish all the participants a successful conference. We thank our governor once more and partners. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Please let's appreciate Sakepa. It's an accountability forum that is working in the education sector. We do all things with them, and they follow us keenly in ensuring that the declaration of emergency done in education is justified based on the governor's will. Good will message, the last one, UNESCO, Stephen Oye Kwelu. Please, let's appreciate him, please. Put your hand together for you. Thank you. Your Excellency, sir, the Executive Governor of Kano State members of the high table. My name is Dr. Stephen Onyekwelo. I'm representing uh, the head of uh, UNESCO office in Nigeria. Your Excellency, I am highly delighted for three things, and permit me. Number one, 32 years ago, I served as a member of the National Youth Service in Kano State. I served here in Bayero University in the Department of Adult Education. And after the service year, the university requested my extra number of months to support the Department of Adult Education. And I did that gladly before I left back. And today, I'm presenting UNESCO to support the state in repositioning education. <laughs> number two, sir. UNESCO has identified with your two key actions. Number one is the declaration of a set of emergency in the education sector. And uh, number two, which nobody has yet mentioned, is that you have surpassed UNESCO's recommendation for... <laughs> UNESCO recommended that countries should budget at least 15 to 20 percent of their annual budget education. And here we are saying 29 percent. Can we put our hands together for His Excellency? 
and um, because of this, Your Excellency, UNESCO has declared that they will support the agenda of the state in the education sector. <laughs> Permit me to also inform as a forerunner to what is going to happen on Monday. UNESCO is launching a project called BIA 3 in Kano State on Monday. <laughs> BIA 3 simply means better education for Africa's rise. Three. And it's going to be launched here in Kano on Monday in this auditorium. <laughs> UNESCO is in partnership with uh, Dangote Ultramodern uh, Vocational Skills Center, Minister of Education and Agriculture in the state. So, Your Excellency, this is the more reason why my director is not here. He said I should come, since you are going to your home, where you serve. But on Monday, they will be here live. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you very much, UNESCO, with your new initiative. BIA3 has been in Kano, and uh, so is an extension. We thank you for all your support. Plan should talk now. Goodwill. Mr. Ogunyan, please, let's appreciate Plan. Plan has been working with Kano, Minister of Education, so much. Thank you. One minute. <laughs> Your Excellency, Governor of Kano State, um, all protocols observed. I only have one minute. So, Your Excellency, I just want to thank you very much for your leadership uh, because this is what we've been looking for. Plain has been working with your team, the Honorable Commissioner and his team, uh, since uh, 2001. Uh, our objective is actually to support you to implement uh, your education um, reforms. Um, for, as you know, there's learning crisis. And the Adora Consultative Chairman has already talked about some of them. Too many children are out of school, and many of those who are in school are not learning, Your Excellency. And so this uh, meeting is very important for us so that we can chart a course. Luckily for us, the PSAR has also uh, itemized all the challenges and has also preferred some solutions. So what I want to say is that at Plain, we stand ready to provide the technical assistance that you need to be able to implement this. We've already done quite a lot. Some of the things that the uh, professor said already are done. For instance, there are committees that are standing. So you don't need a new committee. You might just want to uh, give some uh, new terms of reference to make sure that they just go ahead. And we also want to appeal, sir, that Kano State should conduct its own learning poverty assessment. There's an internet for doing that and if you're able to do that then you will have your own uh, kind of specific information about what is going on the other information sir is that uh, all the primary schools in your state have conducted self-assessment so there's some information about what the schools look like from the head teachers themselves so it's another way of kick-starting uh, implementation of this process so I want to join all the partners here today to say well done and to say we stand ready to support you Thank you very much, the STL plan. Uh, we only have one a goodwill message. It is goodwill message. Uh, we understand that the Honorable Minister will be here tomorrow. So we're taking him off for today's presentation. And for that, the director that represents him today will give us good, uh, goodwill message so that when he comes tomorrow, he takes his role properly. Let's welcome, but before we call on her to come and give a, a good old message, we'd like to inform you that we will be watching a short documentary of, of just 10 minutes. It is another offshoot of a documentary presented during the declaration of the state of emergency, the government house. We want to watch the recovery version of it. So let me welcome the representative of the Honorable Minister, Professor Tahir Mama Oyan, SNA, represented by Dr. Mrs. Foleki Olakunji David for her keynote. Thank you.
Your Excellency, Governor Abakar Bre Yusuf of Kano State, the Deputy Governor, the Secretary to the Governor of Kano State, our own Dr. Bichi, uh, the, our own Professor Rukaya Rusfai, our mama, the former Honorable Minister for Education, we appreciate you, ma'am. Distinguished members of the diplomatic corps, particularly the Deputy British High Commissioner, other diplomatic corps members here present, the national and international development partners represented here, that have been working in this education space. Members of the national and state assemblies, the chairman, Arewa Consultative Council, I greet you, sir. Distinguished members, let me stand on the already properly established protocol. I bring warm greetings from the Honorable Minister of Education. Professor Tahi Maman, Maman S-A-N, O-O-N, who would have loved to be here, but currently they are at the FEC meeting, the weekly meeting of FEC, Federal Executive Council. Hopefully will join us before the end of this conference. And the Honorable Minister of State, Honorable Dr. Yusuf Tanko Sununu, the Permanent Secretary, Mrs. Esther Didi Will was in Jack, and the entire Federal Minister of Education family. It is a great pleasure to be part of this very apt and significant gathering happening here in Kano State, the Kano State International Conference on Education Recovery. As we converge here today to share ideas and strategies for revitalizing our education sector, I commend the government and the good people of Kano State, the Arawa Consultative Council, FCD of Plain, for organizing this meeting and for your commitment to education development and the strive to salvage the sector from total collapse. Our renewed hope education agenda, guided by the ministerial deliverables of delivering quality education, optimizing resources, transforming teaching, the teaching profession, strengthening systems, is dedicated to ensuring that every Nigerian child has access to quality education. Therefore, as we work together to achieve the ministerial deliverables, we are prioritizing the DOTS policy initiative as approved by His Excellency. President Bola Hamed Tinumbu in the following key areas. One is the data repository. We have the DOTS policy initiative. D stands for data. A number of speakers have spoken about the dirt of data for planning and implementation purposes in this sector. So we intend to have and already in play uh, working at it to establish a comprehensive data repository to inform evidence-based decision-making in the sector. Because what you cannot plan, count, you cannot plan for. If you do any form of plan or decision-making on a baseless data set, then you are going towards failure. Secondly, addressing the challenge of out-of-school children education, that is the O of the DOTS, through innovative education programs. And I want to inform us that ongoing we have the discussion on out of school children education at the national level. We have various agencies that also work with the state on ensuring that this huge number of out of school children that we have is reduced to the barest minimum, if not totally eradicated in the next three years. We, for the next three years, thank you, sir. The next three years, we intend to reduce by 70% minimum. And the next tenure, 
perhaps the governor will have, we pray that it will be in the next, uh, the next four or four years, will have total eradication of adult school children in Kano State and in Nigeria. So we are engaging with agencies such as the newly created Almind Jury and Adult School Children Commission, the National Commission for Mass Education, Adult and Non-Formal uh, Commission, in, in, uh, uh, that we call it NMEC. We have the National Council, National Commission on Nomadic Education. We have the National Board for Islamic and Arabic Education. And we have UBEC that we have been working together. And then we have the National, the National Education Group where we have all stakeholders working together. And there's a committee on out of school children education where we have all partners, including FCDO. FCDO is the co-chair while the Federal Minister of Education is the chair. We are looking at strategies, looking at all the resources available, which kind of states can leverage on. Other states can also leverage on these resources, technical assistance, financial support to ensure that we reduce the number of out of school children in Nigeria. And God helping us, we shall do so. Thank you. The third letter in our DOTS policy is for teacher training and development. We want to enhance this to ensure we have quality instruction in our schools. We want children to come back to school. But when they come, where are the teachers? Even the ones that are here, do they have enough capacity to teach properly to ensure that we reduce the learning poverty? to ensure that the learning crisis is reduced, to ensure that learners remain in school, they complete and they are having skills. So we are looking at working tremendously on teacher training and development. The, third, the fourth uh, letter in our dots is the skills, skills development and acquisition. This is done, we are promoting this to prepare students for modern 21st century workforce. There's no denying the fact that the way we were trained, the type of curriculum we had cannot fit into what we have now or in the future. So we need to prepare our learners to be able to have the skills, the soft skills, the right skills, the vocational skills, and technical skills to be able to cope in this 21st century uh, world that we are in. Therefore, our DOS initiative will drive this progress, leveraging digitalization, technology, and skills to create a robust education system. And we are not just staying at the national level. All state governments are also being brought along. We had the boot camp for all states last year for basic education. We have the, constantly, the Honorable Minister is meeting with the states to discuss issues that pertain to the whole sector. So can all states, Please come on board fully. I know we are already there. Even with this conference we have, let's put in our best, ensure we take advantage of all that is available and move in the positive direction. Together, let us empower our children with quality education, skills and knowledge to succeed in this modern age. Let us continue to collaborate, innovate and learn from each other to achieve our education goals. To every stakeholder gathered in this room, I say we really appreciate your efforts, your efforts for your dedication to the education excellence. Let's keep at it. Together we can make a lasting impact on the lives of our children and the future of our, gener of, of our great nation. Thank you for your attention. Happy deliberations. Let's appreciate the representative of the Honorable Minister, Professor Tahir Maman, aptly presented by Dr. Mrs. Folaiki Ola Tunji. Please, let's appreciate her one more time. <laughs> Your Excellency, esteemed participants at this conference, we are moving gradually towards the end of today's opening ceremony. Probably after what we will be doing now, We'll get into plenary where paper presentations will be conducted. This podium will be utilized through discussions on key issues of moving the education sector forward. But now, Your Excellency will lead 
the members of the high table to go down. We have a, a, a seat arranged for His Excellency where we would watch that documentary I had mentioned earlier on. Your Excellency, sir. Shall we please appreciate Your Excellency? Shall we all rise, please, and stretch our legs and hands? His Excellency is coming down. And I want to tell you that we'll be doing a lot today. We'll be having our lead panel of discussants are talking on trends and innovations on effective classroom management and strategies, as well as several other topics that I'll be talking today. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. Damade Dida Sinema Wasu. Oh, that can I light out you. Thank you. Can we please shall we take our seats? Yes, His Excellency is already seated. And the documentary will be played on the Kano State Education Recovery Conference. Let's see the level of decay and dilapidation of our schools so that we can appreciate His Excellency for this bold decision. Light out. Thank you. Education Emergency. Through the unfortunate years of last administrations in Kano State, a silent epidemic plagues in educational institutions. At inception, the Honorable Commissioner of Education, Honorable Umar Haruna Dugwa, uncovered the harsh reality of decay and dilapidation within Kano State Schools, and this he inherited. Father Administration was not willing and was not ready to uh, cooperate with them in terms of uh, executing the state assignment. That uh, led to uh, total dilapidation of the educational structure, the schools, infrastructure, furnitures, teaching and uh, learning aids, and uh, capacity building, and whatever you think is required or is needed to make an uh, education sector tick was not functioning the way it is supposed to function. And uh, uh, in a nutshell, we inherited a dilapidated, decayed system of education in Kano State. As the custodian of education in Kano State, it is imperative for the Honorable Commissioner to witness firsthand the conditions of students' learning as his baseline. And that's exactly what he did. I went to school, and uh, that school has a, a, a total population of 5,618 students, and there's no single chair. Just tell you the level of dilapidation. I went to school with 3,300 uh, students with only one teacher. That is the level of dilapidation. I went to school with more than 5,000 students without a single toilet. That is the level of dilapidation. I went to school uh, just a throne store from here, uh, Meruti Jani, with over 20 classes. All of them populated with more than 40 students without a single chair. I went to school where I saw staff room teachers sitting on the floor. That is the level of dilapidation. Here is my class. We are sitting in the mugs because we don't have enough classes. That's why our school combined, it to, combined us to sit in the mugs because the classes are not enough for us. We don't have even all the chairs. We are just sitting down in the mugs and in the staff room. The mugs is in the staff room, but the teachers and us are sitting. And when the teacher come for a lesson, like, he don't have the confidence to write to round into the class. Our cameras enters the halls of learning where the absence of decks and chairs forces students to seize on the cold hard floor. As I'm speaking to you today, today as of today, I think I visited from institutions that is infrastructures, 
the school has visited 97 uh, institutions under this uh, ministry. Amidst the bustling of life was Government Girls Secondary School, Jogana. Once a school was over 2,000 students in its boarding house. It was, however, closed down some five years ago. And now neglect seeped into its very foundation, leaving behind a trail of decay and dilapidation. Jogana was once vibrant corridors, echoed with the laughter of boarding students, now lay silent, haunted by the memories of the bygone era. Windows once gleaming with sunlight, now stood shattered, allowing tendrils of ivy to creep in, reclaiming what was once not there. The classrooms once filled with the eager minds of tomorrow's leaders now bore the scars of neglect. Decks lay broken, test books torn, and chalkboards faded, every facility decaying evidently showing abandonment that had befallen the institution. The students' dormitories, where friendships were forged and dreams were shared, now stood empty. Government Secondary Tafizal Quran Kiru. The GSTQ Kiru still stands as a haunting reminder of neglect. The school, though not officially closed, resembled a ghost town with its buildings and infrastructure decaying into oblivion. In its heyday, Government Secondary Tafizal Quran Kiru was a bustling institution for Quranic learning with vibrant sounds of Quranic memorizers, classrooms, dedicated teachers and lively students. Years of neglect and lack of maintenance had taken their toll. The school's once grand buildings now stood as mere shells of their former selves, crumbling infrastructure with an unfriendly theater called hostel without even a single bed the teachers' houses at Tafiz al Quran Kiru, which were once a symbol of stability and commitment, now lay abandoned and overrun by dilapidation and decay. The students' hostels, once filled with the air, now stood snoring, with students living on a mat laid on bare floor. Despite the visible dilapidation traces at Kiru, the school is still with students whose fate is between reality and the dream for the future. Boarding schools, once bustling with activity, stands dissolute. Their gets closed to the dreams of countless children. I went to school in Dawa Kintova town, attended the school that was attended by the former governor, Ganduji, with more than 10 hostels. The roof you know, were removed, intentionally removed. The blocks were there standing without any roof. Uh, a hall that is supposed to contain about 200 students has only three beds and uh, them mats. People are sleeping on the floor. That's the level of dilapidation. Decaying infrastructure plagues every corner with cracked walls, leaking roofs, and broken furniture, painting a bleak picture of neglect. The situation as of today is very pathetic, very worrisome, and most unfortunate. I saw this school. I heard a lot about the dilapidation of the school and I felt the best way for me as the governor of the state is for me to come and see for myself and take decision as to how best we have can react to the, uh, the infrastructure and the school. This only one you have conducive learning environment that effective learning can take place. And this is seriously learning in many schools across the 44 LGS. Let me just give you an example. If you go to so many schools, you find the children sitting on bare floor. Now, if you are teaching a child handwriting, he needs to be on a good seat, have a table or a desk, put his uh, uh, book, and then he will be trained on how to write very well. But unfortunately, you find them, all of them, the whole class sitting on a bare floor. So you can hardly get effective learning there taking place. In a class with 150 children, how do you expect a teacher to give classwork or homework? And even if he can be able to give, is, he force, is it possible for him to mark it on time and give them feedback? This affects learning seriously. So it's most unfortunate. 
In response to the infrastructure decay witnessed in this documentary, and the government resolved to the declaration of the state of emergency, the Ministry of Education has so far implemented rigorous training programs for teachers, focusing on science and vocational education. At the State Universal Basic Education Board, Subebi in Kano, capacity building initiatives are planned to improve teacher output and enhance general learning outcomes. Join the Kano State Government in the fight to rebuild, renew, and restore hope in Kano State's educational system by welcoming and supporting the government's efforts in the declaration of the state of emergency in the education sector. Oh, we have this bright idea of even taking girls to their schools from their homes with vehicles that were bastardized after we left office in 2015. But these boats would be repaired, those that are not uh, repairable we would find new them, uh, new new ones. Definitely, we are going to uh, 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 see what we do, how we could, to make sure that the issue of girls' child education is enhanced in Kano State. As we come to the conclusion of our journey, we witness a transformation born from the ashes of neglect. With improved infrastructure, trained teachers and ample resources, the future of education in Kano State shines brighter and the state of emergency so declared may eventually last for a very short period of time. Abakabir Yusuf wanted to see a kind of state where each and every child could read and write. A child that has a bright future, that can aspire to become whatever he wants to become, without deprivation, whether he's from rich, he's from far, he's from what, he's from what. That basic rule of having education as inscribed in our religion, Islam, and as inscribed in the Constitution of the Federal should be a common, common, common phenomenon to all. So everybody must have that access to education. That is the phenomenon, that's what you want to live as a legacy, and inshallah you live it. Years of neglect have left many schools in disarray, with overcrowded classrooms and inadequate resources. Now, as the state faces this critical moment, leaders have convened in a conference to find a new cause for education recovery. Against this backdrop, stakeholders from across the state gather for a landmark conference on education recovery with a the theme of repositioning education in Kano State, navigating pathways to excellence. The conference aims to redefine the future of learning, revitalizing schools and ensuring every child has access to education they deserve. Welcome to Kano State Education Recovery Conference. With the theme, repositioning education in Kano State, navigating the path to excellence. Thank you. Thank you. Your Excellency will be sitting from there. I uh, would invite him for his speech, but won't Miss Cynthia Rowe give her the, uh, good little message? Let's, let's appreciate Miss uh, Cynthia Rowe, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shall we appreciate His Excellency? Please let's appreciate His Excellency as he rules to move to the seats. He'll be taking the seats before the address. Please, let's appreciate him one more time. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. 
Ms. Cynthia Rowe is a development director, FCDO's British High Commission in Abuja, and she gives us our tax on mutual accountability framework. Please, let's appreciate her, please. Thank you. Thank you. Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kano State, Engineer Abba Kabir Yusuf. His Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Kano State, Aminu Abdul Salam Guazo. The very able representative of the Honorable Minister of Education, Professor Tahir Maman, O-O-N-S-A-N. And whilst resting on all protocols, I would like to particularly acknowledge, woman to woman, I think, the first female professor, Raphael. So good morning, everyone. It's, I think we're coming into the afternoon, actually. No, we've, we've hit the afternoon. Um, I am delighted to be here in Kano. As the head of the uh, Development Cooperation for the UK, uh, FCDO, I am really proud to oversee a UK development portfolio in Nigeria that includes humanitarian work, stabilization work, it includes health, economic development, agriculture, governance, and critically important, education. I have to take a moment just to say that Nigeria holds a very special place in my heart, um, and I will tell you why, and particularly northern Nigeria. I was uh, living here in the late 80s with my family. We were, in fact, in, in Kaduna and spent a lot of time in Kano. We were constant visitors to Kano at that time. And they're, they're, my parents are delighted that I'm here. They make me give them updates regularly to tell me uh, what's happening, to tell them what's happening out here. And my favorite memory, I have to tell you, my very first day in, in, uh, in Nigeria was uh, my neighbor came around and said, and we were talking and they said to me, what are your hobbies? And I said, horse riding. And the very next morning, they sent a horse to our house and I, I got on that horse and I rode around the village and the countryside and it was a fantastic memory that I carry with me. <laughs> but on to business. Uh, when I learnt via Ian and Mikhailo of His Excellency's uh, declaration of the state of emergency in education last month, I insisted that I had to come to this conference and understand firsthand how my education team and our plane program can assist Kano State into navigating the path to excellence. And my thanks to His Excellency the Governor and his team for such a warm welcome. And also to the Secretary to the State, Dr. Bishu and his team. I think you are here, sir. Thank you also for your very warm discussions yesterday. We, we, we are all here. Uh, we are all, I feel like I'm preaching to the converted uh, already. Delivering quality education to all girls and boys is absolutely critical. Whether in the UK, across Africa, or here in northern Nigeria, education is fundamental to reducing poverty, building prosperous and resilient economies, and peaceful and stable societies. And we know a child whose mother can read is 50% more likely to live beyond the age of five and 50% more likely to be immunized. That's an incredible statistic. Since the return to democratic governance in Nigeria 25 years ago, the UK has had a sustained and comprehensive program of development cooperation with Kano State and we operate a dedicated office and team here to oversee that. And the plain partnership for learning in all Nigerian education, uh, our current flagship education started in 2021, but our partnership with Kano on education goes way back. It goes over the last 20 years. And that is through programs, including some of these you may recognize, um, they're all acronyms, CUBE, ESSPIN, there was a teacher's development program, girls' education project, 
and now Plain, where we are working to improve basic education delivery with teacher and head teacher training and curriculum and textbook development. A major initiative, which I'm really proud of, was to improve Hauser-based foundational literacy and numeracy. And the RANA package is now widespread across Kano and neighbouring states. And this is in line with Nigerian policy and help to learn, to, to teach children to learn the basics and to enable lifelong learning. I'm super proud of that. The Payne Foundational Skills Package has reached over 1,100 schools in Kano, training 4,757 teachers and equipping 1,090. 90 head teachers with inclusive leadership skills and over 300,000 children have directly benefited and millions more indirectly. Working with community-backed Islam Islamia, excuse my pronunciation, Quranic and Sangaya schools to widen their offer with Hausa and, numeracy, and numeracy teaching was also a vital strategy promoted by ESSPIN and is now being used by Plain to reach highly marginalised al Majiri boys in Kano and other parts of the north. And through that we see continuity and that's very important to our relationship with Nigeria and, and with Kano State. Making schools safe and supportive for girls is also a vital part of our work and the provision of water and sanitation and building child protection systems to keep all girls and all boys safe is essential. Safety is not only about physical security from hostile bandits and so on. Um, schools must also promote a gender-friendly and inclusive environment where children feel safe and want to go to class. And our experience suggests training and employing more local women to become the teachers and head teachers of tomorrow is vital to do this. <laughs> Plain has supported work to review and develop Carno's new policies on teachers and girls' education. And I applaud the news that I hear from the Honourable Commissioner of Education that plans are underway to recruit over 5,000 new teachers and that 60% of those recruits are female. Well done, sir. Empowering more women to participate and to be appointed into leadership positions in the education sector is a strategy that this conference I know will be considering and uh, in that avoiding a wasting of the potential talent of the workforce. A slight change of note, um, moving away from education slightly and into the wider picture of how we connect with the governor and his team and the state is that we explicitly design our programs to align with state government priorities and we work in synergy across key sectors including education, health, agricultural development and climate resilient investment. And these programs are underwritten by our support to improve the core governance and accountability systems and to build government staff capabilities needed for effective service delivery. And I just wanted to say that I particularly appreciated the, the story of the, the gatekeeping of the, the, the wall of China and, and we all know how much governance underpins that. <laughs> Our deep experience and engagement in Kano has taught us many valuable lessons. And perhaps the most important is the value of enduring and collaborative partnerships, which are founded on deep and mutually respectful relationships of equals. And for this reason, we initiated the Mutual Accountability Framework, and that is to reaffirm the joint commitment and continued cooperation between the Kano State Government and the UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, FCDO Nigeria. The MAF, the Mutual Accountability Framework, aims to improve coordination and support the government's efforts to implement reforms that will drive development throughout Kano State. And this means 
that we jointly implement and monitor concrete reforms that support good governance, improvements in economic delivery and investment, and reduce poverty through human capital development in Kano. The Kano Mutual Accountability Framework provides for continuous engagement and monitoring of development initiatives and for regular strategic dialogue between the Kano state and FCDO on a range of policies. And as I said, all that we as the UK align behind the state government and the federal government objectives and aims, and that we also hold ourselves accountable for the promises and the commitments that we make to the government. And we are open to approaches and views from the Kano government to widen the reach and the impact of the mutual accountability framework approach and potentially invite in, at the governor's discretion, other development partners and aid agencies. And in all cases, for those, we maintain close ties and knowledge of their programmes and pipelines so that we use our potential to multiply the scale of results and not fragment what we are doing um, and pull people in different directions. Knowing that financial resources are limited, and I speak for the UK also, as well as the global economic climate, it does make sense that we should be taking strategic action and evidence-backed approaches and reforms from conferences such as this to encourage all of Kano State's partners to follow integrated multi-year implementation plans. And that is a lot of jargon. You saw me stumble over that. <laughs> but the upshot is we should be working to the same plan and the same budget under the same objectives. As the UK Acting High Commissioner Jill has flagged already, we are pleased that the FCDO playing team have been able to get behind this crucial priority to address the state of emergency in education so quickly and with a rapid push to help in the organisation of this conference. So I am here to listen, to debate, to learn from you all, so that we as the UK may adjust and optimise a pathway ahead for PLAIN. And I will also look at other initiatives that have the potential to integrate with and strengthen Carnot's state education delivery system. As we all know, today's children are the nation's talent and they are the workforce of tomorrow. We neglect their education at our own peril. But if we get this right, a world of opportunities could open up and that has to be the greatest incentive for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's appreciate Ms. Cynthia Ra. She's the Deputy Director of the CDOs. I, I, I must appreciate the presentation as well as uh, several contributions in today's uh, session. And I must commend all our esteemed participants and delegates as well as paper presenters that are keenly following and waiting towards the ending of this commissioning, uh, and of course, the proper ushering of the conference, which will start in session in a short while. Your Excellency, distinguished guest, it's about time for us to have the grand presentation, and of course, the speech by His Excellency. The people governor, the governor that always talked the people's governor the governor that decides to go into education as his priority first, second and third priority we appreciate his excellency the executive governor of Kano State Alaji Abba Kabir Yusuf for all that is doing in the education sector. Let's appreciate His Excellency for that. Thank you.
Dana, sit down, please. Please have your seat. Please be seated. The Honorable Minister of Education, Dr. Maman Tahir, ably represented by Dr. Mrs. Polaki Olatunji David, the Deputy British High Commissioner, Ms. Jill Lever, the FCDO Director, Dr. Guyon Pes. Sorry, Director, Development Director, FCD, Mrs. Sinzia Roy, UNESCO Representative, Dr. Stephen Kunye, other development partners here, and two new mirrors to mention. Of course, the former Minister of Education, Professor Rokayet Ahmed Rafai, our Royal Pathers, especially a father to me, as he mentioned in his speech, Wazirin Duse Alaji Bashur. Al Hatu, who represented the Ariwa Consultative Forum. Our Ulamas here present, members of the Kano State Executive Council, especially the SSG Head of Service, and other commissioners, special advisors and heads of extra ministerial agencies here present. Other critical stakeholders in education, especially our two vice chancellors, that of BUK and the Northwest University here present. Of course, distinguished members of the Diplomatic Corps, other educational friends across the globe, security personnel, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. It is with great pleasure and profound sense of responsibility that I welcome you all to the opening ceremony of the Education Recovery Conference holding today in the ancient city of Kano. The conference, as I was made to believe, was organized jointly by Plan, Nigeria, Ariel Consultative Forum, and of course the Kano State Government, which also marks a historic moment in our struggle towards revitalizing and repositioning education sector 
in our beloved state. It is gratifying to inform this August gathering that just a while ago, the present administration in the state, under my leadership, declared a state of emergency in the education sector in the state. Recognizing the urgent and profound need for a comprehensive and aggressive reform as well as strategic intervention to salvage the sector. Let me say that this conference, which is a gathering of experts, education, technocrats, policy makers, and other critical holders in the education sector is quite timely. I believe in every effort that is geared towards critically appraising and repositioning the education system and leading the path to the educational excellence in our dear state. As we are met to believe also, the theme of this conference, which is repositioning education in Kano State, navigating the paths to excellence, encapsulating our shared vision and commitment to transforming our educational system in the state. Education is not merely a pathway to individual success, but it's a collective societal progress and economic development as well as prosperity. It is our duty as a custodian of public trust to ensure that every child in Kano receives a quality education that will prepare them for the challenges and opportunities of the 21st century. Throughout this conference, we will engage in rigorous discussions, exchanges of innovative ideas and initiative partnerships that will subsequently shape the future of education in the state as well as beyond that. Our goal here is to clear, to identify auctionable strategies and policies that will enable us to overcome the existing challenges and build a synergistic, inclusive and responsive education system in the state. Ladies and gentlemen, as I stated during the declaration of state of emergency on education sector, our vision is critical. It is crystal clear and we are deeply committed to the attainment of the objectives of the declaration. At the end of the emergency period, we intend to achieve the following, as was enumerated by the former Minister of Education. That is every school, a good school, every child, and enrolled, enrolled in school, every student, engaged and engaged learner, every teacher, a caring educator, every parent, a dedicated partner, every community, a committed stakeholder, and your government, a committed investor in capital development. Canal State education system has experienced serious dilapidation with decaying infrastructures in school and a very low learning outcomes and performance. Our government met schools and indeed the entire education system in a state of utter and unacceptable neglect. We inherited a collapsed system deliberately destroyed and vandalized schools without archives, 
no infrastructure of materials yet. We were running a free and compulsory education with a bill that has been passed as a law as at that time. We must therefore navigate as a government to provide all essential materials needed to embargoate the system. Hence the declaration of state of emergency and the convocation of this education recovery conference. Let me say that in the last 12 months since our coming into office and because of our sincere commitment to turning around the importance of education in our state, we have made some strategic and implemented some deliberate policies to awaken and reinvigorate the education system. Some of these actions include allocating unprecedented 29.95% of our 2024 budget to education. This, of course, is the highest in the country and highest even in the history of all the past governments in Kano State. We have equally invested over 2 billion naira to acquire and distribute instructional materials to basic and post-basic schools across the state. We have approved the release of over 2.7 billion naira for the construction of the first phase of 176 classrooms and 88 offices across the 44 local government areas. We have also approved and released 1.9 billion for the renovation and upgrade of 220 schools by the Community Reorientation Committee. We have also completed the construction of 336 new classrooms. I had wanted the Commissioner of Education during the new presentation to have shown to you some of the completed um, primary schools, but due to time, uh, he couldn't do so. Let me equally seize this opportunity to most humbly thank the former Minister of Education for her eloquent and very rich speech. During her speech, what captured my mind was the issue of implementation. She was very, very critical of that she advised us to ensure full implementation of all the policies geared towards revamping the educational sector. And let me say, Honorable Minister, as if you read my mind, as if you know I'm even, I was even wondering whether one of my staff licked this to the Honorable Minister, specifically when she mentioned the timeline that at least there is a need for quarterly um, briefing so that people will know progress we made. And also when she mentioned timeline of three months and specifically said like between now and October, Honorable Minister, let me assure you that we are fully ready. We made sure that before we declared the state of emergency, we prepared ourselves fully for the implementation of all the policies we intend to do. Let me equally say that uh, the Honorable Minister again raised issue on the girls' um, she made mention about the implementation, of course, and then she also 
spoke about the prohibition of textbooks as well as school uniforms. Of course, with the large number of our students, Kano State Government alone cannot take full responsibility of giving uniforms and textbooks free to all. But what we intend to do is to do it in stagnation. For this term, we intend to give to the for new enrollees, um, primary one and primary two students, we intend to provide uniforms for all across the state. And then next year, we also increase it to primary three, primary two, primary one. Uh, for textbooks, uh, we are working assiduously in collaboration with many of the development partners, in collaboration with the federal government through the Federal Ministry of Education to see what they can do to assist the Kano state government. But even with that, what we intend to do is to make sure that we make these textbooks and other instructional materials available as much as we can. So we thank you for that, Honorable Minister. Now in continuation of uh, highlighting the achievements we have so far recorded, let me say that from May 29th to date, we have equally set 1.5 billion for the paying of students in our boarding schools. We have also commenced the renovation of deboarded girls' schools with a view to reopening and reboarding them across the state. We also invested over 1.3 billion naira in 2023 to register Kano State students to write and the NBAIS across the state. Ladies and gentlemen, we intervened and supported Kano State students studying in federal tertiary education institutions in Kano and other states by upsetting the registration liabilities amounting to about 1.2 billion naira. We equally invested 2.9 billion to pay for this year's NECO examination registration piece. We recruited over 10,000 best teachers for cohorts three and four. We equally recruited and employed new 5,623 best teachers across the 44 local government areas. We have reintroduced the Girl Child School Bus Initiative, which you just saw through the screen. We have sponsored the first batch of 1,000 and one first class graduate to study for their higher degrees in foreign universities, to which we expect, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they will all come back to this country, back to Kano, back to their parents and the people by the end of the year, inshallah. We are equally working to see the reopening of the 32 boarding schools closed by the previous administration. Let me say that we intend to provide chairs and desks to every school, chairs and desks to every school, as well as equip them with quality and qualified teachers by the grace of Allah. We intend to ensure that every people will have a chair and desk in all classes and all schools before the end of our demonstration, inshallah. Ladies and gentlemen, we have recently 
recruited their teachers, I said that. Let me seize this opportunity once more to urge all participants at this conference to actively participate in the deliberations Sorry. in the deliberations to share your expertise and the insights freely and to challenge conventional thinking where necessary. Let us collectively benefit from the wisdom and determination present in this room so that we can chart a course that ensures no child in Kano State is left behind. Let me see this opportunity to also emphasize that education for all is the responsibility of all of us. We therefore need to build on the already existing political will of the present administration and midwife a collective community will that the entire, so that the entire stakeholders, spectrum, students, teachers, parents, communities, investors, partners, and government will roll up their sleeves and cooperate together to make the radical changes needed to make our education system strong, accessible, and qualitative. Together, we can do it by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me say at this juncture that on our part, we believe it is double and achievable task. There is no investment on our children and youths that is better than investing in their education and in their future. Their future, I must therefore reiterate, is our collective responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, as I declare this conference open, let all of us remain steadfast in our commitment to excellence, to equity, and access to quality education. Let us seize this opportunity to make a lasting impact in the lives of our children, our communities, our state, and of course, our nation in general. Finally, in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in the name, in the overall interest of our state and the country in general, I declare this conference open for the benefit of our people and our children. I thank you most humbly for your attention. God bless Kano State. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Governor Abakabir Yusuf's speech brings us to the end of the live Thank transmission of Kano State Education please Recovery please Conference. And now we are linking up let's with our uh, live OB crew in Port Harcourt for the Niger Delta his Excellency uh, and, and, and NDDC Niger Delta Summit. For Thank you well for being with us. Speech encapsulated in his words of action, commitment, with all this zeal and responsibility. Your Excellency, distinguished delegates of this conference, it's about time for us to break out from the morning session to go for lunch and prayers. In a short while, we'll be right back here to continue deliberation and, of course, paper presentation and plenary.